In this lesson, we're going to be talking about TCP IP. TCP IP is actually a suite of protocols designed to allow communication over a network. Even though there's only two protocols that are sort of listed in the name, we talk about TCP and IP. That's primarily because TCP is the protocol that you are going to be using most of the time when you're doing communications over the internet or over a network. And IP is really the foundation protocol that most everything rides over. So TCP is actually a connection-oriented protocol. And the reason we call it a connection-oriented protocol is because TCP goes through this process called a three-way handshake of establishing a connection with the other side in order to ensure reliability. So I've got our old friend Wireshark up here, and I've done a packet capture. And we can actually see the TCP headers here. Let me drag this up so you can see a little bit more. So with TCP, we've got a source port and a destination port. And then we've got some other information like sequence number and acknowledgement number. And there's also window size value. Now, all of those have to do with ensuring that communications not only get from one point to the other point reliably, but they also arrive in the correct order. So the sequence number helps to ensure that packets get put back together in the correct order. So there's not some sort of out of order or out of sequence problem where things would end up not looking right when you receive them. So you don't want to receive an email, for example, where the second paragraph arrives first and then the first paragraph is really at the bottom, just as an example. That just wouldn't make a whole lot of sense. And so that's why we use things like sequence number with TCP. Now TCP's got a series of flags and you can see the SYN flag and the acknowledgement flag and the FIN flag those are all around doing the connection setup and the connection teardown. So the three-way handshake, which is a three-message setup of a communication, is there to ensure that if party A is talking to party B, that first of all, party B is there, and also that party A is there as well and who they say they are. That prevents things like spoofing. So somebody sending a message to party B pretending to be party A and not actually being party A. This three-way handshake prevents or helps to prevent that situation so we can make sure that the two ends are actually there. They are ready to receive and send messages and they are effectively who they say they are. Now, IP, as I said, is the underlying protocol. And right here, we've got the internet protocol shown, and we're using version 4 here. Now, the internet protocol is there to actually make sure that the messages get to where they need to get to. And because of that, it holds the address portion of these messages. So you can see in the internet protocol header towards the bottom, Underneath header checksum, you'll see a source and destination. That's where the IP addresses are. So not surprisingly, the IP addresses are stored in the IP version or the IP portion of the packet that is sent. So we've got a source and destination address, and that ensures that packets get to where they are supposed to get to and replies can get back to the sender. So that's why we have a source and a destination address. So as I said, IP is really sort of the foundation of this suite of protocols. Now, there are a number of other protocols as well. For example, the address resolution protocol, which helps to figure out what a local address is from an IP address because there are a number of local protocols like Ethernet, for example, would be a local or a layer two protocol. And we need to be able to translate an IP address 
to a local address or a Mac or layer two address. So that's what the address resolution protocol is for, and that's part of the TCP IP suite of protocols as well. So we've got one other protocol that you'll run into a lot, and it's sort of the analog of TCP. Where TCP is a reliable protocol, we've got the user datagram protocol here, which is an unreliable protocol. Now, unreliable protocol doesn't mean that if you send something via UDP, it's not going to get there. UDP uses sort of a best effort delivery mechanism where UDP will send something out on the wire and there won't be any attempt to ensure that the packet gets there. Unlike TCP, where there will be acknowledgments and other checks to make sure that messages get there in their in sequence, with UDP, we get none of that. You send a message out with UDP, and it may get there, it may not get there, it may get there out of sequence, actually. And the reason UDP exists is because sometimes we just want flat-out speed. So when you're streaming video, for example, you're more concerned with whether the messages get there in a timely fashion then maybe whether they get there in the exact right sequence because you can probably drop several packets and not lose enough information so that the quality degrades. But if we're held up waiting for packets while we ensure that they get there on time and in the right order, you're going to end up pausing the video a lot and it's going to be choppy and it's not going to be very useful. So UDP is really good for real time protocols. Now, one thing that I'm going to point out here with UDP that I didn't point out with TCP is UDP and TCP are both layer four protocols. And we talk about the OSI model in another lesson. So layer four protocols actually have source ports and destination ports. And that's how to differentiate different communication streams. So I can have a number of different services listening on different destination ports. And the source port is to differentiate something on the sender side. So, for example, right here, I've got a UDP port that's 53. I could have another UDP port that was 21, for example. Different services would be listening on those. Now, the source port is on the other end, and that's so that I can do things like communicate to multiple servers and be able to differentiate the streams as they come back. They would be coming back to my source port when the messages are responded to and they come back to me. So we've got ports with layer four protocols like TCP and UDP, and we've got addresses with IP in the internet protocol. So that's just kind of a, a very brief overview of TCP, IP, and you know a couple of the protocols that you would run across as you are doing some network investigations.